some of you probably already know quite a lot about uh, the uh, K-pop. So I tried to put uh, K-pop as I can in, in a nutshell. Well, it's a uh, pop from South Korea and they're uh, highly hybridized and it brings, I mean, uh, combines pop, dance, electro, hip hop, reggae, um, uh, the R&B, uh, rock, uh, just anything, many, many different kinds of uh, uh, the global popular music genres, uh, the, uh, you will find them in, uh, it's even sometimes even a single, a single song. Uh, it was performed by, kind of mostly by idol groups. Uh, they are both Korean and transnational. Um, the uh, artists are recruited uh, through different kinds of uh, uh, ways. Uh, but at the same time, uh, they still maintain some kind of uh, uh, the Korean or Asian ethnicity to some extent. Uh, so producers and composers and choreographers that they are both Korean and international collaboration. And uh, so it's a very kind of in that sense, uh, both production and the consumption is a very uh, transnational and global. And of course, the fans, uh, uh, the fandom in K-pop is extremely important uh, because they very much uh, rely on global youth uh, and they're as a, they're the target audience. And of course, di digital technology and social media play enormous ro uh, important role in the uh, distribution of a K-pop globally. And um, uh, the uh, Choi Jung Bong and uh, 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 Ma Lian Kai they called uh, K-pop as augmented entertainment because the K-pop is not just about music, but it covers all other kind of uh, uh, relevant and um, the uh, genres and areas of uh, popular culture and entertainment, which I believe uh, Mark's uh, uh, course covers uh, really uh, extensively. Uh, so. Images and uh, uh, the, the way K-pop is represented is a cool, fun, but at the same time very safe because there is a very little reference to sexual violence and also uh, predominantly very sexual image and the cuteness is very often uh, emphasized. And the catch tunes and the visually very elaborate and the uh, dance routines are really extremely well synchronized and uh, very sharp. And uh, also, especially the lavish uh, video production is another feature uh, of uh, K-pop. And uh, uh, the, also the music video play uh, contributed a great deal to success of uh, K-pop. Um, and uh, it's in a way that is a brand of a transnational K-pop produced for overseas export. And that this international market-oriented uh, economic drives influence the K-pop output considerably and, um, and which I'm going to talk a little bit more uh, in, in a bit. So, and the K-pop music industry uh, currently is the sixth largest in the world. And when you, when you talk about recorded music and uh, K-pop is also was a seventh favorite music genre according to a uh, 2019 global listening report. It's interesting. It's, uh, um, it's, uh, it's, it's more um, popular than the classical music or jazz, which is uh, quite interesting. And uh, uh, the K-pop songs, uh, they were played uh, extensively during the uh, 2018 Winter Olympic uh, the ceremony. And they also, also oh, close. Uh, close, uh, the score of uh, K-pop. And they also played the uh, Beatles uh, Imagine. And uh, actually, when you think about uh, the, um, the London Olympic uh, opening ceremony, and game, and then they also played a lot of uh, British popular songs too. So, so increasingly, uh, the popular music become a uh, kind of a, um, uh, a favorite music genre that uh, kind of uh, signify, they symbolize, or they represent uh, the culture, contemporary culture of a nation, uh, not just Korea, but uh, other parts of the world as well. So currently two most successful K-pop acts, uh, uh, you probably know, all of you know, uh, BTS and Blackpink. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, BTS, uh, it, uh, um, they were, uh, the, um, they are managed uh, by Big Hit Entertainment, uh, which now has recently uh, uh, became Hive. Uh, they changed the name and then became uh, in, enormously kind of uh, influential and powerful. Uh, so their success, I mean, they, they kind of keep breaking their own record uh, in, in, I mean, constantly. And the, um, there's a dynamite, um, 
the uh, uh, the English language uh, song uh, that made number one in the Billboard Hot One uh, Hot One 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 Hundred, which is a single chart, and uh, the life goes on and the second place. So this is the first time ever for Asian popular uh, the uh, music or music act uh, to uh, to uh, to go that high. And uh, the International Federation of uh, uh, Phonographic Industry, um, uh, they, they do uh, the global uh, the, uh, research on uh, recording uh, uh, industry. And uh, uh, according to their uh, recent report, the, uh, BTS is a global recording artist of the year for 2020. So it's, that means uh, that means that they're on top of the uh, kind of a, a league in many ways. Mm -hmm. And the Blackpink, uh, they were um, uh, they are managed by YG Entertainment and debuted in 2016. And uh, the they this is another group uh, which seems to keep breaking their own records. And uh, their uh, recent uh, their last year music video, uh, how do you like that? Uh, it was the most viewed music video in the first 24 hours of the release of, the, of that year. So, and uh, they also made it to uh, the Billboard, a uh, global uh, the chart, but excluding USA. So Love Seekers and then also the ice cream with the Selena Gomez also uh, went on to, on to the chart. So this means that they, uh, uh, they're doing uh, they're quite well uh, globally and also in, uh, in the States. Um, so, uh, but then it, maybe uh, some of you probably, I mean, more, all of you probably have, must have seen uh, um, uh, Kang Kang, uh, Sai's Gangnam Style. But in a way, in many ways, the Sai's Gangnam Style is not very typical uh, K-pop at all. But at the same time, they have, uh, they, it became uh, kind of a, a first uh, um, encounter for many uh, non-Korean artists, uh, the audience uh, to to experience, uh, to to hear and see uh, what uh, K-pop uh, is like. Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. Uh, it's released in 2012, uh, July. Uh, so far, there uh, there was over 4 billion uh, uh, views of uh, this music video, which is quite significant. But you still cannot compete with uh, uh, Despacito, which are uh, beyond uh, 7 billion. Uh, so, but still, uh, the K-pop the K-pop music video is quite uh, still running, uh, kind of one of the highest uh, the uh, rating kind of a view. And uh, the uh, Blackpink, this is the one which I, I will show just very, very briefly, just to get the, uh, uh, the flavor of, of the, this. <laughs> And uh, so uh, in the next one, 
this uh, the BTS Dynamite. Uh, this is the one uh, really uh, kind of made uh, BTS enormously successful, and that this is the one uh, song which made uh, the um, brought uh, the BTS uh, act to a Billboard uh, number one on single chart. <laughs> stop here to, uh, to save a bit of a time uh, for us uh, to have uh, some uh, question and discussion later. So uh, I just show a uh, three um, uh, three um, uh, K-pop music videos which probably are uh, well known to uh, many uh, people by now. Uh, even when you are not really K-pop fans, still you must have seen um, at least heard about uh, the Psy and the Dynamite by now. And the, this, uh, the K-pop is a very part of the, uh, the um, uh, uh, Korean wave, uh, which is a kind of, a, uh, the, uh, the, which has been developed by, uh, in uh, the Korean popular, uh, the um, cultural industry uh, since late 1990. So I'm not going to talk about the history, uh, but uh, what is important is that it is, uh, the, uh, the Korean wave is started with the Korean dr uh, drama, the TV dramas, which was popular in Asian countries. And then it became a, a more kind of globalized in, uh, as uh, it went on. And uh, uh, the, also the Korean wave was strategically promoted by the uh, state in 2009 and with the establishment of a presidential council on the nation, uh, nation branding in January 2009. So it's a nation branding is a really important component of this kind of current uh, Korean popular um, cultural development, especially creative industry, uh, 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 because um, the, uh, with the uh, South Korean government's uh, the, uh, support, popular culture is uh, promoted as a nation, uh, the national symbol, contributing uh, to the uh, nation branding. So this is kind of, in a way, a combination of a cultural nationalism and also brand nationalism. So in this case, it's a national identity is used as a kind of commodity. So among uh, this, uh, the um, Korean wave, there are many, many different kinds of uh, genres and uh, genres, like film, music, food and fashion and sports and cosmetic and video games and so on and so forth. But the video games probably are most profi uh, profitable. It, make, uh, the, it uh, brings uh, most revenue, but K-pop is the most significant. So it's a slightly, it, K-pop may not uh, the, um, uh, generate uh, uh, enormous uh, the um, revenue compared to other uh, the uh, uh, Hallyu, uh, um, 
how you but still keep up with populism is the most significant uh, because it is uh, partly because um, the, the music uh, the music video keep up music video is uh, freely um, uh, the widely available uh, free of charge and uh, of course with uh, um, the sound uh, music streaming a service uh, which also made uh, K-pop more uh, accessible to uh, international and global uh, audience that also uh, made a hu huge uh, uh, impact. And uh, so in many ways, it's a, this is a kind of a music uh, is a, or uh, the um, Korean wave is a used as a kind of has seen as a uh, tool for cultural diplomacy to enhance uh, Korea's uh, the influence and the soft power uh, through the uh, kind of uh, uh, the um, to, to, to global uh, the audience and also in the international uh, development. But this kind of a cultural diplomacy and um, uh, focus on soft power is not anything new. And in fact, it was a mid 1990s uh, in, in the UK uh, the, with a new Labour uh, led by a new Labour Party led by uh, Tony Blair. They were talking about that cool Brit uh, Britannia. And then another uh, the example is a cool Japan. Uh, the uh, Japanese state was uh, uh, the promoting this this uh, the uh, catchphrase uh, using uh, kind of a youth culture anime and uh, manga and uh, J-pop and so on and so forth. So, uh, but in this case, uh, in in this context, uh, the um, K-pop is not just the uh, the uh, entertainment, but also become a very very in, uh, important uh, uh, the uh, let's say symbol and uh, media to. Um, let uh, the uh, Korean Korea's kind of position uh, to uh, to be uh, widely recognized and appreciated uh, in uh, in the international, in especially the political uh, milieu. Um, so then, let's go back to uh, the music and how music capacity and uh, its um, um, uh, production system is uh, very much managed uh, by entertainment agencies. And uh, this, and also, uh, you could say, you, you may uh, uh, say, call a uh, K-pop industry like an idol industry. Um, the, uh, it was ad adapted from Japanese system of uh, uh, the uh, Jumusho, and the idolu system. So it's a kind of, uh, the, uh, it wasn't invented in uh, South Korea, but invented in uh, Japan, but which this kind of a, a system, idol system, in fact, in, in, in turn, was uh, the, the, based on uh, American kind of uh, uh, the system uh, or uh, the Hollywood and uh, the like a uh, Motown and uh, the all these, uh, the particular type way to uh, promote and create, pro produce uh, music. And uh, in uh, K-pop, apprentice, uh, apprentice system is very important. So they, they train um, how to sing and dance, rap, and stage manners and acting in foreign languages and approximately two years or much longer. So the, another in, uh, interest, uh, important uh, uh, um, the, uh, issue is the, uh, what, what you call the 360 degree contract. So it's a business relationship between artists and company. So company provides everything, the financial and other support, including marketing, promotion, and touring, and so on and so forth. But artists give a promote a percentage of a revenue stream, including everything. So they have a kind of a they have a, a very um, let's say interdependent that they really cannot uh, the uh, function without each other. So and then this was this kind of 360 degree contract was created by Motown in the USA and in, in the 60s. It's not anything uh, new either. Uh, so this is a kind of a how a, a global industry, music industry, was uh, uh, the, uh, developed uh, from the uh, 60s onward. And the, the artists are recruited through a street, street recruitment or open competition, auditions, and uh, music reality shows, and so on and so forth. And the uh, training can start very early age, uh, very uh, and uh, very a long a long time. And uh, also another thing is that there's a, cert a certain kind of refined organizational identities. So it's a kind of coherent brand like a YG, uh, SM, JYP, and that they're kind of their own manufactured or the created individuality and distinctiveness. And uh, the 
also because of the, there's an emphasis on the global market, there's a foreign sub, uh, subsidiaries uh, like uh, JVS, uh, uh, JVS and so on and so forth. So, and the length training is a very, very important and the foreign members, uh, but still within the kind of Asian or uh, the um, transnational Asian uh, community uh, recruited uh, to, to, to be part of the K-pop, uh, the, uh, uh, the act. For example, um, the um, Blackpink has a Thai uh, the, uh, member and uh, the, uh, who's Lisa and uh, um, the um, EXO uh, originally they had a kind of a, they had a two outfit EXO M for, uh, the, for Chinese market, XOK for Korea and the global market and so on and so forth. So this kind of the international, transnational uh, recruitment is a very, very important uh, for K-pop to, uh, to secure uh, to the uh, uh, international market, especially when there's a specific uh, the members from and the, the, uh, like Thailand, uh, when they, uh, the, of course, uh, Black Pink is uh, popular, but because of the uh, the mem uh, one of the member is uh, the Thai herself, so it makes a huge difference. Um, so, and then these major entertainment agencies, uh, they are kind of intermediaries uh, who mediate between musicians and the consumers. But also, they also double as a producers. So it's a very kind of a very powerful and very uh, in, um, um, influential and that there also a vertical kind of integration so it's a process about artist selection which performance and training image making songwriting and the management the contract and all this production is all kind of a carefully planned and controlled and managed uh, by the entertainment agencies and I just heard that uh, the uh, also uh, in addition to the music they produce the uh, other kind of merchandise uh, include I mean the uh, not just only CDs so different kind of uh, storybooks and so on and so forth. I just learned this morning uh, that um, the um, big hit entertainment uh, the uh, uh, graphic designs uh, for um, their. Uh, uh, their bands, their acts, uh, won some uh, uh, the prestige uh, graphic awards. That means uh, that it is, they're really uh, they're not just uh, limiting themselves to the music production, but other uh, area, uh, uh, relevant related areas of a business. So, and then uh, the because uh, because of the uh, emphasis on these entertainment agencies, the the uh, there was a huge uh, transition from small recording studio and the niche producer to center players of a uh, contemporary music scene. That it, there used to be big three, but now it's called the big four, uh, which includes a big uh, big hit entertainment. And then, in fact, Pang uh, Shihok's. Uh, Big hit entertainment, which was established in 2005, uh, that came out of the JYP, and then now is uh, they re renamed themselves uh, Hive Corporation, and they also uh, they uh, recently um, uh, purchased uh, Itaka Holdings, which is uh, the uh, owned by very famous uh, the uh, um, American promoter Scooter Brown who manages um, Justin Bieber and Ariana Grande and many others. So now um, BTS are, uh, belong to the same company as uh, Justin Bieber and uh, Ariana, uh, Ariana Grande. Oops. Mm. Okay, so and uh, the, uh, when it comes to production process, uh, there's a division of a uh, creative labor. So, and the manufacturers, the um, the manufacturer of uh, the K-pop music and performance is a Korean talent in the management, and the creative uh, content uh, that uh, the music is a uh, very much uh, the globally uh, kind of uh, global outsource, uh, globally outsource. So um, the uh, let's say from USA and Europe and Japan. And, uh, or, and then they will be come. Uh, they will come to a Korean studio, and then they uh, package in a way uh, the, the way they, they would like to see it to fit into their own kind of uh, uh, the uh, artistic planning. And then it will be uh, the um, produced and then uh, the, the distributed globally uh, in Asian Americas and Europe and other regions. 
So, uh, for example, Dynamite uh, to uh, BTS of Dynamite to 2020, this uh, single uh, was they uh, BTS are their primary vocal vocals, but David Stewart and actually there are a lot of uh, uh, British artists who uh, were involved in this production of this is a, a song. David Stewart was a songwriter and uh, a producer. He uh, wrote the song and uh, also played a lot of instruments and uh, in that recording. And Jess uh, Jessica uh, Agombra, uh, uh, Agomba, she wrote the lyrics. And uh, P Dog is uh, the Korean uh, the producer and uh, engineer. He's the one who did the uh, recording engineering and the many others. So it's a very truly uh, global and uh, uh, transnational kind of a collaboration. And uh, uh, here, um, I'm, I want to say a little bit about um, the uh, K-pop reception in the fans in, uh, the, in the UK. And I hope I will have uh, enough time to kind of, uh, leave to, for the discussion. Um, the K-pop, I mean, is uh, popular uh, just about uh, many, many different uh, parts of the world. But I suppose in a way the K-pop reception and fans uh, in the fandom in the UK probably specific, which is quite different from uh, Japan or uh, other parts of Europe and uh, or Japan, uh, China and, 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 and so on and so forth, because it's a kind of part of uh, UK being uh, one of the main producers of uh, Anglo-American popular music, but yet uh, when it comes uh, the, to the, um, because of the uh, size of the market, it has a slightly different kind of a relationship. And uh, at when K-pop was introduced and mostly K uh, UK fans, they, uh, they, um, they, they were listening to uh, uh, by YouTube and uh, through social media. And some of them, they probably didn't really uh, kind of uh, reveal their kind of fan identity because they were very, very small, minor, uh, small minority. Uh, so uh, when there was a, a K first uh, K-pop uh, the uh, concert uh, in 2011, uh, 2012, um, then uh, the independent report about uh, the shiny a uh, UK debut of a shiny, and then they uh, she this uh, the uh, reviewer said K-pop boy uh, band really stir up craze in their fans, and almost like the the way the um, the American uh, the fans uh, were uh, excited by uh, Beatles uh, in the States in 1960s, a very kind of similar kind of a, a, the, a, the um, reception or a description of the fan reaction uh, by the, uh, the um, media, UK media. And uh, uh, Big Bang, uh, YG Entertainment, uh, the, uh, of the YG Entertainment that gave a concert in the uh, Wembley Arena in 2013, and uh, these, uh, I mean, uh, uh, they kind of call it kind of pretty, uh, the Korean One Direction or Justin Bieber because they, they couldn't really see uh, any much difference between uh, this Anglo-American pop and uh, the K-pop. But at the same time, uh, they could see this as something uh, uh, somewhat different from uh, the, uh, uh, this Anglo-American, uh, the popular music. And uh, also 2018, the BBC Radio 1 documentary, uh, the, the film, uh, K-pop, Korea's a Secret Weapon, is a quite interesting um, um, documentary. Some of, you, uh, some of you might have seen it. And uh, um, they, uh, this uh, program was uh, made um, by uh, the Radio 1 uh, because after they received so many requests uh, from K-pop fans, uh, fans to play uh, K-pop songs on, on the program. So they, want, they wanted to find out what it's all about. So then um, they went to uh, Korea and then gave, um, uh, interviewed uh, some key fi uh, figures in, in the industry, including um, they also include, uh, interviewed the BTS and BTS as a choreographer and so on and so forth. They also came to, uh, to me uh, to, uh, to interview uh, me. Uh, so I, I have a little kind of a, 10 seconds, no, but five seconds in that this film. And I, I put the link here so that uh, you, you can watch it. It's really informative. And, uh, um, and then uh, of course, in the, by, by 2018, um, K-pop, especially the BTS was uh, quite well known. And um, 
the uh, BTS coverage of uh, just before their concert in 2018, and uh, the the uh, uh, the reviewer uh, for the uh, Time Out magazine, the, uh, uh, magazine says that BTS uh, uh, epitomizes a pop uh, pop's global future. So it's a very kind of positive uh, uh, spin to it. And then the BBC News uh, and also uh, called the BB, uh, BTS the Beatles for the 20, uh, 21st century. And then I had a kind of a small uh, Google survey in 2019 and to find about, to kind of uh, try to find about how K-pop, uh, the UK fans, uh, the receipt, uh, to think about the BTS and the K-pop in, in, in general. So, and then I asked this question uh, the sample wasn't what wasn't very big, but only 100. But still, quite uh, interesting uh, result came out. So these 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 answers are from uh, those who uh, identify themselves as a BTS fan or who have who have uh, the, listened to a BTS. Whereas this uh, the uh, group of people uh, they don't uh, they they're not very much aware of a BTS or. Um, they're not necessarily um, the fan of a BTS fans. So, and the, when I asked them uh, what's uh, what's the most important thing, and for for them, and then this is a, a for B, uh, the for BTS fans, oh, sorry, and the dance and choreography, song lyrics, and the message, and this kind of order, and for K-pop fans, group image is important, dance and choreography, engagement of the fan. And the uh, song lyrics and message are further down. So um, I'm going to go to the next one. So um, the uh, this this is the kind of uh, the uh, the order of uh, um, the importance. So choreography was a dance movement. It was important. It's kind of common in uh, for all K-pop uh, the acts. And the, uh, interesting for B BTS was the song lyrics and the social messages were well, really important. That is a very significant contrast to the another Google survey which I did in 2013. And I asked what do you think uh, makes a K-pop uh, appealing? And the answer was funny and fun is a very kind of entertaining. And uh, uh, so perhaps it was a, a based on uh, uh, size Gangnam Style because it was this, this was uh, Gangnam Style came out in 2000. 2012, and this Google survey was done. Uh, Google survey in the UK was done 2013. So it's a day, uh, what they knew about uh, the um, uh, K-pop was a uh, Gangnam style, and they, even that at the time BTS wasn't uh, even born uh, because they debuted in 2013. So engagement with the fan is important, and individual personality and group image is important, and so on and so forth. So, and then what, what is interesting is that this song lyrics and social messages, and from, uh, especially from a fan's point of view, is a very important, and this is, their lyrics are um, they're relatable, and then they somehow feel that this is something which they can will uh, kind of uh, simple emphasize. And of course, the BTS and social media are enormously important, and uh, there is a uh, ubiquitous uh, presence on online platforms and they have their own shows and so on and so forth. So they don't have to go through a conventional media by passing. So they have uh, their own kind of uh, the, um, the uh, 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 online uh, world. And the work ethics are extremely important. Of course, it's important for, uh, for the uh, K-pop industry as a whole, but BTS proved that they work even harder to, uh, to get where, uh, where they are because they came from the margin or even underdog of a K-pop industry um, and then to, uh, to reach the global st stardom. This is a kind of a become almost kind of a, the uh, common uh, narrative and almost kind of not quite a mythology, but uh, mythologize their success um, from the, uh, about, uh, the, um, the, the, uh, margin and and to the uh to, to center and the, to the top uh of the uh that their their kind of a league and another thing is the creative autonomy and uh, uh in comparison uh with the other uh k-pop acts and the K bts are uh are supposed to have a more uh, uh the creative autonomy they write they're more involved in the writing and uh, 
and even uh, the video uh, the production was uh, uh, done by one of the members and so on and so forth. This gives it an additional element of authenticity and originality to the music. And this is kind of very important image and the position in the music industry, especially in the eyes of a Western media. Yeah. So and, uh, and so, it, which in a way is probably, although BTS is still part of a K-pop industry, but managed to break the um, the stereotype kind of image, like uh, the factory, uh, like what C, um, the uh, Seabrook uh, wrote about. K-pop industry is a factory. Uh, uh, how. Uh, the music is uh, kind of manufactured in such way. So this kind of narrative was a very pervasive, um, still is um, in many ways. This is uh, used uh, by many over and over again by uh, many uh, the Western media and the critics and so on and so forth. And the uh, fan demography and the very heterogeneous and uh, cosmopolitan and the multi-ethnic in the UK. But compared to early 2010, the K-pop listeners increased with uh, also a higher percentage of a white population. So it's not just ethnic minorities, but uh, more on the white uh, the, uh, the population that begin to listen to uh, K-pop. Um, so um, K-pop fans are also very much uh, kind of, oops, uh, sorry about this. Um, the uh, activists sometimes, it, they're really well known, especially the, K uh, the BTS fans who are known as the army. So this is the last uh, the um, slide. So uh, the uh, title of a lecture uh, which Mark uh, gave me was a K-pop uh, Korean Global Trans uh, uh, Transnational. The answer uh, answer to this question is um, uh, yes and yes and yes. Uh, because it's a global and a transnational pop with a Korean characteristics and the both in, the, in terms of a production and consumption. But at the same time, what does a Korean list mean here? It can be, uh, can, it's not really fixed in many ways uh, because of what Korean needs for, from Korean state's uh, point of view, from artist's point of view, or industry's point of view can vary, also constantly uh, changing because identity is not something fixed. It's a kind of becoming uh, thing. And in this case, even Koreanness, the national identity itself uh, is, is constantly changing. And the perception about Koreanness by international fans also can be very, very, very depending, depending on their own cultural uh, disposition and the perspective and the, their uh, understanding of outside world. Yeah. So, uh, but nevertheless, it's a K-pop is no longer an exotic and subcultural music supported by a small devoted fandom. It, I think it, it passed that uh, the uh, stage, stage uh, completely. And also example of a, uh, what, uh, what is called termed as a POP 2.0. Uh, this is a term uh, uh, which uh, the American uh, writer uh, co uh, called uh, the jo Jonathan uh, Karamanika um, talked about. So it's a main, mainstream uh, um, Anglo-American uh, uh, music. Uh, when the, this kind of a music was uh, dominating the globe, it was a POP uh, 1.0. But now we enter the age of a POP. Uh, the 2.0, uh, uh, along with uh, uh, Latin trap and the melody hip hop and other genres, which is a non Anglo American uh, pop. So it, this also uh, the shows the changing ecology of the international music market and above all, the increasing power of the music listeners and the fans who are no longer passive consumers, but important players and activists. And also uh, they are, um, they, uh, um, they have a voice and agencies uh, to the, uh, to, uh, and also would like to express and uh, support, the, um, support the artists of their choice. I think this probably will um, end uh, 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 my, my talk.